What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Old School with you, Legendary Bloodlines. It's going to be um, a little bit of Throne and Liberty on the menu today, and we're going to go right through the five main reasons why I think this game should be exciting to most people and get you hyped. Um, it's really, really simple. This game started out as, you know, a Lineage Eternal. That was the title of it. It was going to be a sequel to Lineage using that IP, and that just didn't come through well. Um, the game was originally an action RPG title, and it just didn't feel good. They did a beta back in Korea in 2016, and, you know, this game was launched back in 2011 um initially the project so they've been working on this for over 12 years and now you got here where we're at now after all these revamps and we know that amazon is going to be publishing the title and at first i think most of us were a little bit sus suspect on that one but you know they did a pretty good job turning New World around so far. Lost Ark was kind of dead in the water because they pretty much predatory monetization model on that. They couldn't fix what came from the East. You know, New World is a Western title, so they can do what they want with it. It's a no pay to win and um, no sub. Uh, New World specifically. But anyway, so they've got their shit a little bit together now with MMORPGs, and they're probably capable of handling this publication better than any publication they've done. Um, as a matter of fact, it's kind of funny, but I think all the failures with New World are going to help Throne and Liberty actually succeed. And on that note, let's get right into the top five reasons why you should be hyped for Throne and Liberty. And number one is because this is just a brand new AAA title. We're actually getting something that was, you know, heart and soul put into this by a lot of people on a big project. This is over a decade old. It was, you know, one thing, lineage turned into another thing, Throne in Liberty. They rewrote the lore for us the audience so that it would be you know enticing to play it would be immersive they redid the world so that it wasn't an action rpg it was a true mmorpg with that you know look around feel tab targeting they went with tab targeting i think they did that because in between everquest and wow we've had a ton of mmos come out that aren't tab target and they haven't really you know changed the game so to speak elder scrolls online and new world come to mind first and guild wars 2 is kind of a blend of it but you know these guys are going back to the roots of World of Warcraft and EverQuest with tab targeting combat, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's actually a fucking great thing. I think a lot of us are sick and tired of having to hit 400 fucking buttons to do a single ability. That's ridiculous. Black Desert Online combat is shit. I don't care what anybody says. It's the most beautiful looking combat, but to play it is fucking, it's just brutal. You might as well get Carpal Tunnel within the first 15 minutes and just forget it. But anyways, Throne and Liberty. So first reason you should be excited is because this is a new title and it's a good one. And it's something that we've been asking for. We're going back to our roots here. We're getting tab target. We're getting a, a, a world that's filled with, you know, the orcs, the elves, all this shit that you like. It's high fantasy. Okay, and it's not a gender-locked game like these new titles like Lost Ark and Black Desert that came out of the East trying to be a Western MMORPG and fail. I mean, you could argue with me that Black Desert Online isn't a failure. Lost Ark is definitely one. But BDO is just a terrible game if you're a Western male. I made a new video on that recently where there's 17 female classes and 9 male classes. It's just ridiculous. So Throne and Liberty, we're not doing anything of that shit this game's classless there's no gender lock it's a new triple a title by a company that has tons of experience ncsoft has been around forever they've made a ton of games and they chose amazon to publish this and like i said before i think that's great because amazon now has the experience to do this 
Wow, I think all the errors that they made with New World and with publishing Lost Ark are going to actually make this a successful launch in the West. And that's number one, is it's just going to be a great new game to play. And that should be enough to get most of us excited because it's got me excited just to play a game that has similar mechanics to the old games we play. And we'll get a little bit more into that because that's going to be another number on the list is some similarities to old school games. But let's wrap up number one and get on to number two. So number two, it's going to be character creation. And for a lot of people, this is very important in the MMORPG they play. When you download a game and you log into it for the first time and you get to the character creation screen and it sucks. Like Diablo 4 had very few features for a game that cost $100 million to develop. That's pretty sad. Lost Ark, Black Desert Online, they have gender-locked classes. So when you pick the, the class you want to play, you have to customize the character based on the gender. So if you're a dude and you want to play an assassin in Lost Ark, you're going to be customizing a female character. For a lot of us, that just fucking sucks. We don't like it. We don't want to do it, period. Well, I truly believe Throne and Liberty has the best character creation I've ever seen in any MMORPG. And go back to like, let's say EverQuest, the first one. Now there wasn't a lot of options. You could basically change the face and the hairstyle and the facial hair. And in some of them you could change skin tone and that's it. Um, World of Warcraft is very similar, although over the years, World of Warcraft has updated its character creation to be better, more modern. But if we're talking modern character creation, you want all the abilities to change the way that your character looks. And I believe that this Throne and Liberty character creation is not only the best that's ever come out, I believe it's going to set the standard in the future for character creation. I don't think a game that comes out after Throne and Liberty will be successful in MMORPG unless it at least has this level of character customization. We're not going to be able to go backwards from here. They even have an ability where you can upload an image and it makes the character look like you. And a lot of people have been doing, you know, celebrity look-alike Throne and Liberty character creation videos. You can look them up where they put in a picture of a celebrity and it comes out with a character that looks like the celebrity. So the technology is ridiculous. What I like about it is all of these presets are actually good. Um, and a lot of the games, the presets suck. I don't know who designs them, but they're usually fucking terrible. Um, the dudes in Throne and Liberty, most of them look cool. I mean, they look like dudes that you may play. And I don't like playing presets. I always pick a preset and then customize it to make it look the, exactly the way I want. This game has the ability to do that, and a lot of games don't. So that's basically it. The character creation in this game is amazing. And when you're starting the game, that's the first thing that you get into. So that's something to be hyped about. Um, it's actually so good that in Korea, South Korea, they recently had like the pre-launch character creation where you could log in for the weekend and create your character. Well, that was so popular in South Korea that they went from five to about 10 servers because the servers were completely full with just people creating characters. So this is a blockbuster hit over in the East. And I think this one is Western enough to potentially be a game changer over here. And character creation just goes to show you that they have taken games like Lost Ark and Black Desert Online and the old school games like EverQuest and stuff and gone more towards like a Elder Scrolls Online, you know, but a lot better. Um, New World, but way better. And um, that's my feel on it. I feel like this character creation is definitely something that's enough to get you hyped. And on that note, 
Let's move on to number three, which is going to be races and classes. And we just went over character creation, and I kind of failed to mention the fact that you can only create a human in Throne and Liberty. So the only race playable is human, although you'll be seeing all your high fantasy, you know, monsters and whatnot. You can't play an actual orc or an elf. I think that's pretty cool. I think that whole thing where, you know, you pick some sort of race because it has an ability associated with it, like World of Warcraft, and, you know, then you're kind of tied into p picking a certain race, <clears throat> um, depending on which class you want to play. This game doesn't have that limitation. We're all humans, and you can basically make your human look as odd as you'd like. So I prefer that, I think, going forward. Um, meaning, like, I prefer the ability to have everybody have races that don't have special abilities tied to them whether that means that we all play the same race like in this game or going forward like with the lord of the rings or the warhammer or the new everquest game if you're gonna have racial abilities or whatnot you really have to balance things out those things when you get to end game and player versus player those can be you know game breaking in some situations like you know the break stun ability in World of Warcraft. I mean, anybody that does arena plays a human just because of the single racial ability. Um, so yeah, I like the fact that this is getting away from that. I'm not saying that I always want to have to play a human in future MMORPGs, but I like the fact that we're all in the same playing field and there is no special thing that one person gets over the other. Now, classes. This game doesn't have classes. It's another thing that I really, really like the idea of on paper. We're going to have to see how it plays out. Although this game's been being played for over, uh, you know, five years uh, consistently now. Um, like I said before, 11 years in development. So, yeah, races... I don't know. That's just a thing where I think going forward, I like the idea of having everybody on the same playing field and the classes not having a class creates the same exact system where everybody's on the same playing field new world is very you know similar to the fact that you have your abilities attached to your weapons guild wars 2 has that but your class also has utility abilities so that makes your class stand out from other classes that would you know potentially use the same weapons elder scrolls online has you know kind of you, you empower your weapons you put points into them as you use them it's not as you know dedicated as new world system but it was the first to do it elder scrolls online like the way they did they were basically the pioneers of that and um throne and liberty is run with it you know they've seen what works and they're gonna go with this classless system so that's gonna bring us on to number four which i think is very cool and that is going to be something that everybody is going to enjoy because there's going to be so many unique ways to play the game based off how you decide you want to play so you're saying okay well that sounds boring there are no classes you know what i mean what makes my character stand out from other characters well there's a lot of things and we'll get into that in number four and number four is going to be Gameplay with tab targeting, weapon abilities and combos, and non-static fighting. And yes, that's a mouthful. But I'm going to break it down a little bit. So number four is basically gameplay. And the fact that they're combining old school tab targeting with new school weapon abilities and combos... And the fact that they took their static combat, revamped it, and made it so that you can move while you're using a lot of abilities, unless you're a caster, just like, you know, standard MMOs. This is huge. I think uh, gameplay is a deal breaker for most games. It can look as pretty as it wants. The story can be as good as it wants. 
the team behind the project can be amazing and they can have a ton of money. But if the gameplay isn't good and you don't enjoy the combat, then the game's going to be a failure. It's only going to be a honeymoon phase game and there will be no longevity. Um, a lot of people play like a Black Desert Online although it has a lot of problems simply because they love the combat and that's something that you need to enjoy like in new world combat's pretty you know different than a standard mmo i shouldn't say pretty different it's extremely different um you know elder scrolls was like a slight you know difference um well that was a bigger than a slight from a world of warcraft than an everquest but new world is like you know taking elder scrolls online to the next level this game's combining all those things that work the tab targeting from like you know everquest world of warcraft that we love the ability to empower your weapons just like elder scrolls new world you know there's a lot of games like that guild wars 2 you don't really you know build up your weapon abilities but the weapons you use have different abilities for your character your class so i believe this combination of all of these elements is going to be a winning combination and the fact that they're listening to the audience and they're changing things specifically like the way that this static combat worked and they completely removed auto combat i don't know if you heard but that is definitely not a thing anymore and yeah i think this is good i think people are going to enjoy the combat it's not going to be as intense as a new world and it's going to be more familiar to a lot of the wow players in the EverQuest players and you're still going to have that modern feel because you're going to have the weapon abilities and the combos because weapons do combos so depending on you know which two weapon sets you use you can switch and do a combo so the weapon set thing is just like you know a new world again where you're switching your weapons or a guild wars 2 you got a weapon swap and this game has combos which is pretty cool so you know there's going to be a lot of unique flavor in the way people play the game they said there's also going to be like a rune system just like in a lot of the big mmos right now where you can take a, a rune attach it to an item or an ability and you know become super powerful in whichever way that rune decides that it wants to empower you and um yeah reason number four gameplay i think this is one of the biggest ones because it's a hook if you don't have good gameplay the game is gonna suck so on to that next one we're gonna go number five this is gonna wrap it up we're gonna go with a big one and you know I think this game honestly is going to be a bit more popular than people think. I think there's going to be literally a million people playing at launch for the Western release minimum. They're selling a million copies of this. Um, and it's probably going to be bigger than that because they have Amazon publishing. So it could be like, you know, two, three million sales people playing right before the day this thing comes out. So once they start you know releasing some more marketing to the west here people are going to really start being you know more aware of the game i think the game has still a small awareness over here in the west because amazon hasn't decided to do any sort of you know promotional marketing nothing they don't want to touch it and it's supposedly until the 7th just so you know so on the 7th when the the south korean launch happens we're supposed to be able to get western information about the release after that date. so number five is going to be the world and the story and that's basically the bread and butter of a game besides the gameplay it needs to have an amazing magical feeling world with characters that you care about quest lines that you actually give a shit about and want to read I mean, how many of us these days just click accept and then go turn in your quest because the quests are created basically just as a fucking task. There's no people aren't the, the designers don't put enough effort into the quests. If you go back to like EverQuest, I mean, and it's in the name, those quests were amazing. And then EverQuest 2 had heritage quests. World of Warcraft has amazing quests. 
And I mean, you just can't have a MMORPG without good quests. Guild Wars 2 tried to do it. They're like the only one that doesn't have quests. They kind of have these hubs and you do these little quests just in the area in these dynamic events. And there's a main storyline quest that you can follow and a couple side quests, but not the type of thing where you go out searching for these, you know, unique adventures and quests throughout the world. And I think that this game's going to do that. And in a new setting that none of us have actually experienced so I mean we've got a whole new world to experience here so if you're into it you can get into the lore they've actually gotten a lot of information out recently because of their re release coming out in South Korea so everyone can have you know you you have an apple to chew on if you want it I don't think though a lot of people are still aware of the game and I think that once awareness becomes a thing, people will start getting interested in the backstory and the lore. And I believe that they'll start putting out, you know, publications on YouTube and stuff where they'll kind of go through the lore so it's easy to follow. But yeah, you have a whole new story to follow, all new characters to follow. I mean, that's pretty important. We all know all of the stories almost in all of the big games, right? We've played them for so many years, and I'm not saying that's bad, but who doesn't want a new book to read, you know? We've all been reading the same books forever, and we finally got a new one. I think actually, too, that they're putting enough effort into this where the book's worth reading. I've gone through a lot of the, the lore, and I think it's actually not only acceptable to the West, but it's, it's quite intriguing, and I'm going to make a series of videos coming up that I go over the lore so people can start getting, you know, excited about the people, the world, the quests. But this is just a brief overview, this number five of the world and the story and the, the, the lore and the history. And I think that a lot of the the zones are going to be very familiar, the biome structures, and a lot of the art is going to look familiar. And that's important. You know, you do want something new, but familiar is always good. I feel like this is basically a world of Warcraft, okay, mixed with like an Elder Scrolls with like new world graphics toned down a tiny bit. And I think that's what everybody wants. Essentially, this is kind of ever questy in a lot of ways. And that gets me excited. They even have the open dungeons where, you know, you're going to have to go and compete. The dungeons aren't instanced and the PVP is going to be out of this world. And I didn't even want to put that on the list because I know some people don't like it. So it's not like a for everyone. I wanted these five things to be for everyone, but I will say that the PVP is going to be exceptional and I will make a whole video on the PVP but this is just about you know all of these different places the sanctum of desire you know you just saw the stuff lizard island you know all these places have familiar biomes too whether you play EverQuest or you play World of Warcraft you're gonna kind of you know feel at home in some of these zones and I think that's important um, one of the biggest things about the world in Throne and Liberty is that it's dynamic. And see, we don't really have that in any games we play now. The day and night cycles in Throne and Liberty create different environmental impacts. So whether it's night or, you know, it's day. EverQuest kind of did that back in the day. And other games do it. I mean, you know... Guild Wars 2 has it in some zones where at a certain time of night the monsters get harder and that's just a thing. So they kind of have dynamic zones in that way. But Throne and Liberty is going to take it a whole nother level up. And a lot of the weather is going to have impacts on the zones. So, you know, whether it's raining or not you may or may not have access to a place that was like an underground cavern because it's flooded now or whatever. Weather also affects some abilities and wind is going to be a thing. So, you know, it's going to be a little bit more dynamic than people are used to. And I want to wrap the video up. And if you made it this far, thank you so much. I can't believe you did it for hanging out with me that long. Um, if you don't mind, I would like to ask if you could 
hit that subscribe button. It does help my channel grow, and I do make content quite frequently. And I do interact with my audience, so if you want to leave a comment about a video that I made or something like that, I most likely will interact with you. And um, I enjoy the back and forth about the gaming. I'm an old school gamer who's just, uh, you know, I'm older in life and I do have some time on my hands, um, which is kind of cool and the ability to do what I want really. And I have really nice equipment and whatnot like that. Well, for gaming, I still haven't stepped it up for this whole YouTube thing yet, but it's been kind of like, you know, an experiment turned into a hobby, turned into something that I enjoy. And if you uh, do have any positive feedback about the video, I would appreciate that. And thanks again for sticking with me. And until next time, have a good one, everybody.